Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel Infotech with Zafar Khan. Today I am going to discuss a new lecture of DevOps series that is lecture number 18. The agenda of this lecture is getting familiar of Ansible workflow and its concept. We will now have a look how Ansible works and understand some important Ansible terminology and its concept to help you understanding and familiarize with these terms as they come up throughout the Ansible series. As you know, we have already started the Ansible. Probably this is the second lecture of the Ansible. So we must have to understand these terms. So basically Ansible works by connecting to the nodes and pushing out a small program called Ansible module. You know very well Ansible works with pushing mechanism while the other two configuration management tool like Chef and Puppets work as a pull mechanism. So Ansible pushing out as it is working in a pull, pulling mechani pushing mechanism. So Ansible push out a small program which is known as Ansible module. Then Ansible executed these module and removed them after finish. In this diagram the management node which is also called a controlling node so this is basically a controlling node that controls the entire execution of a playbook so it controls basically to playbook the inventory file this is basically inventory file provides the list of host where the ansible module need to be run the management node makes an ssh connection and executed the small module on the host machine and installed the software. Host machine, this is basically a managed host you can say. So there are three nodes or your host machine you can say. These machines are connected with the managed node or you can say control node and these are connected with SSH. So these control nodes basically control the host node or host or you can say managed host. Now let's discuss about each and every uh, points. The first one is the control node. A control node is the system where Ansible is installed and set up to connect to the servers or web servers you can say. You can have a multiple control nodes and any system capable of running Ansible can be set up as a control node including personal computer or laptop running on uh, Linux or Unix based operating system. Ansible control nodes are primarily used to run the task on managed host. You can use any machine with Python installed as an Ansible control node. Next one is the managed node or you can say host. The system you control using Ansible are called managed node or you can say host that you manage using Ansible. Ansible requires that managed nodes are reachable by, via the SSH because there is a connectivity, SSH connectivity between the managed node and the control nodes. So they are managed and are reachable via the SSH and have installed Python. Python it may be uh, version 2.6 or higher or maybe 3.5 or higher. So managed nodes are the basically are the target devices you aim to manage with the Ansible. Normally Ansible is not installed in the managed node. So in the managed node Ansible is not required. But you are controlling from the control nodes where the Ansible is installed. Next one is the inventory. An inventory file basically contains a list of hosts you will manage using the Ansible. Although Ansible typically creates a default inventory file when you install the Ansible, you can use per project inventories to have a better separation of your infrastructure and avoid running commands or playbooks on the wrong server by mistake. Your inventory can specify information specific to each node like IP address or host name something like that. It is also used for assigning groups that both allow for node selection in the play and bulk variation assignment. So the default location of the inventory file is 
slash etc slash ansible slash host so basically when you are going to uh, enter the host name or the uh, ip address you just do the vi uh, vi editor and put the slash etc slash ansible and slash host and over there you can in, uh, enter the ip addresses of the managed nodes i will show you in the practical when we will start the demo in upcoming videos it will it is a very easy so this is basically inventory uh, file so it uh, for example you are just put over here sub web servers so there are three nodes or uh, three nodes managed nodes or the ip address of these managed nodes are 10.10.10.1 and 3 you can also put the database servers as well if you want to do something through ansible so put the database so whatever the servers you mention over here or you wanted to do some activities on that particular server so just you have to put in the inventory file now the task in ansible a task is an individual unit of work to execute on a managed node each action to perform is defined as a task whatever the action you have to you, you want to perform it is defined as a task so task can be executed as one of action via add hoc command or included in the playbook as a part of an automation script next one is the playbook this is a very important one a playbook contains an ordered list of tasks what are the tasks you want to perform over there you have to mention in the playbook so playbook contains the ordered list of tasks and a few other directives to indicate which host are the target of that automation whether or not to use a privilege escalation system to run those tasks and optional section to define variables or include files so ansible execute task sequentially and full play playbook execution is called a play so playbook are written in uh, yaml format we have already discussed and are easy to read it is a very easy to read and write even share and understand it is very understandable very simple one so here is an example of the playbook okay so let's discuss what each line does over here the first one is the name so basically it's a name of the playbook and the second one is the host which i have mentioned the web server and this is a set of host usually grouped together as a host group and defined in the inventory file and then uh, becomes becomes means to tell ansible this play has to be executed with uh, elevated privilege mean elevated, elevated privileges means higher privileges the next one next line is the uh, becomes underscore user the user name that we want to switch to like compare it with sudo or some other users then the task so task is basically a set of task to execute all tasks would be defined and then we have two task with two modules here i have mentioned the two task with two module one first module is the yum and the second module is service so here the first module is yum and then second module is service in the first task with yum the state latest represents the forementioned package httpd should be installed if it is not installed or if it is already installed it should be upgraded to the latest version available if you do not want to be upgraded it if already present you can change it state as a present so if you don't want to upgrade with the latest version so just mention over here that present and on the second task with service module we are making sure that the service name httpd is started and running using the state started so here is uh, httpd we have mentioned state is started the ansible would not restart the service if already started and running 
The next one is the handler. Handler. This is also very important. Handlers are used to perform action on a service, such as a restarting or a stopping a service that is actively running on the managed node systems. So handlers are typically triggered by the task, and their execution happens at the end of a play. After all tasks are finished, this way, if more than one task trigger a restart to be, to a service. For instance, the service will only be restarted once and after all the task is executed. Although the default handler perhaps is more efficient and overall a better practice, it is also possible to force immediate handler execution if that is required by the task. So handler are just like a other task in a playbook. Playbook. The difference be uh, difference being that they are triggered using the notify directive and are only run when there is a change of state. So this is an example of handlers over here. So this is a playbook uh, that installed and start the Apache on target system. So basically we are installing the Apache on the target system. Target system you can say manage node. The playbook consists of a regular task and a handler. The regular task install the Apache on the target system. Once installed, notify directive calls the handler task which start the Apache server. I will show you in the demo uh, in the upcoming video. So how we will restart, how you will use the handler. Okay. Next one is the role. A role is a setup of playbooks and related files organized into a predefined structure that is known by the NCLA. Roles facilitate reusing the re reusing and repurposing playbook into shareable package of granular automation for a specific goal such as installing a web server, installing a PHP environment or setting up the MySQL server. So these are the basically role of the uh, uh, role of the Ansible. Okay. So this is all about the important Ansible terminologies and concept we understood about the controls nodes, managed nodes, inventory, files, playbook, how to write the playbook, task, handlers and the rules. Alright, uh, we have uh, a more video about Ansible's. The upcoming video uh, will be some more details and uh, we will do the demo as well. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I will try my best to answer all your queries. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to click the subscribe button, please.